guys, Angel here, back with part two of 25 ways to raise uncommon teens in today's world. Okay, guys, today I'm recording in my Snuggie. I know, I know I probably could have got dressed, but I didn't because I'm so comfy. And I'm sitting in my kitchen. I just had my, my cup of coffee and I am ready to go in. So number seven, we left off with number seven from the first video. Number seven in... 25 ways to raise uncommon teens in today's world is to get involved in their school. I cannot say this enough. Now, I understand that there are working parents that cannot cannot join the PTA or cannot, well, you can always join because your money still goes even goes towards the school and the school projects. Even if you can't physically be there, you can be there monetarily. But if, um, if you can get involved in the PTA, please do so. Let me tell you something. My 17 year old, my oldest is 17 and she, and I've been involved since she's been in school and on the PTA. And I have a lot of teacher friends, so I'm not bashing teachers, but let me tell you this, that teachers treat your child different when they know that you're involved. I've seen it throughout the 17 years that I've been literally inside the school system. I've seen it, some very hmm, disrespectful things go on in the classroom that I had to say something to the higher ups in the school and parents, uh, not parents, um, the parents were very appreciative, but the teacher that performed this disrespectful act to the student was very upset with me. But do you think I care? Do you think I care? Like, really? Because I would have wanted another parent to do the same for me if I couldn't be there. So get involved in your children's school. The teachers treat your children so much different when they know that you show up, that you're involved. And please, for the life of me, do not be one of those parents that the teacher only sees you when something is going crazy with your child at school and then you wanna show up all loud, rude, and disrespectful. But I know that's none of my viewers because all of you guys are freaking awesome. But if somebody just stumbles upon this video, because it can't be my, my regular watchers. Number eight is to Create a sacred home for your children to come home to. Oh my goodness. This is a really, really big deal to me. And this has been a really big deal to me since my oldest was little. I don't, I never liked arguing in front of her. I never liked um, saying inappropriate things around her. And it's not just the things that we say, obviously they play a huge deal. But when you think about creating a sacred home, our children are out all day long amongst the world. And in school with all the drama and all the he said this and she said that, the one place that you want your, your children to be able to feel safe and not judged is at home and we have the power to do that. We can create a powerful atmosphere for our children to come home. And that includes having a clean home. That includes making your home smell good. That includes not judging your children. That also includes, and I believe that's another tip, is to not letting your children, if you have more than one child, don't let them call each other names. Don't let them call each other fat, stupid, dumb, or careless and all these things amongst themselves because they're getting enough of that in school and outside of the home. Let the home be their haven. I could talk so much about that, that point alone on creating a sacred home. Um, okay, so moving on, that was number eight. Number nine is to show them that you love them more than you tell them. Now, this is something that used to happen with me. And I, I share with you guys that growing up, my mother and I didn't have a lot of you know, uh, mother-daughter conversations. So when my mother would get upset with us and it say if it had nothing to do with us, if something happened at work that day and she came home and took it out on us, her way of apologizing or her way of making things right was to always take us shopping now. 
in your teens, you're like, yeah, I'm going shopping. Yes, I'm going to get some new clothes. Like me and my brothers and sisters, like we stayed fresh, like the latest everything, but not realizing that it wasn't until I got into my mid twenties that I realized that I would have much rather have my mother sit down and talk to me about some things than taking me out shopping. So obviously buying your children things is a part of showing them that you love them. So hold what I'm saying in context here. So you want to show them that you love them more than you tell them. There's a saying that says that um, your children want your presence more than they want, to want your presence, the things that you can give them. So show them you love them more than you tell them. Number 10 is one of my favorites. Well, they're all my favorites, but this one in particular is like super close to my heart. And that is to nurture their unique gifts and talents early and show them how to embrace it. This is so huge. If you notice that your child really excels in a particular area that they weren't necessarily trained in or or they were not professionally taught, like if they can naturally sing or if they can naturally dance or if they can naturally write poetry, hone in on that. Send them to workshops around that. Get a tutor that is specifically a gear. So if your child can play the piano, enroll them in piano lessons. You want to identify their unique gifts and talents very, very early on so you can train them to nurture that and to mature that gift so they can use that later on in life to earn a living because that really is what our natural gifts and talents are for. They are to create our income. It's not just to, we're not meant to just go and get a freaking stinking job just to pay the bills. Now, a lot of us fall on times that we have done that and we need to do that, but ultimately our true purpose and our true calling is to use your natural gifts and talents to create an income. So you wanna recognize that early on in your children and you want to pay attention to that so they can learn to value that unique gift and talent because I can bet you other kids are not valuing it. They may be pointing it out, making fun of them, but when they come to their sacred home, you can nurture that for them. Number 11, this one is another one of my favorites. This one is clean your room before you tell them to clean theirs. And this is not just specifically, or this isn't just literally clean your room before you tell them to clean theirs. It does encompass that too. But what I mean is it can be difficult to tell your child to do something that you yourself are not doing. It, that can definitely be a challenge. So you want to make sure that you are on the up and up before you go lay down the law with your children because they're going to see you. If you keep telling them to clean your room, go clean your room, go clean your bathroom and do all this stuff, but your stuff is jacked up, they're going to look like, well, why are you do mine when yours is jacked up? It's just they see better. They learn from us better by seeing what we do than telling them what to do. So that one is very, very important. Clean your room before you tell them to clean theirs. Number 13 is another one of my favorites. And that is to listen, listen, listen attentively and actively when they talk to you. Now, in the coaching world, there is something called active listening, which means that a coach should be listening to a client and listening to the words that they're saying, but also listening to the things that they're not saying. And so if I'm talking to my daughter and I'm doing this, this is my phone, ain't she cute? I really need to like uh, do something up there because that kind of wore off and I need to get with my girl. Anyway, so here's my phone. So say my daughter comes in the room and she's talking to me and I'm going, I'm on my phone, upgraded or updating my Facebook status or checking my Twitter or my Instagram or whatever I'm doing, texting, whatever I'm doing. And I'm, my daughter's sitting there talking to me and I'm going, and I'm looking at her like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is not active listening. 
that is not active listening and you see so much of that today when some when your child is listening to you drop everything give them your full attention because you're their parent. They want you to hear them. They want to talk to you, especially if you have a teenager that's coming to talk to you, honey. Count yourself as extremely blessed and drop everything. Um, I remember watching Oprah Winfrey and Donald Trump was on TV. And this was huge for me. This was so big for me. His, um, his, his children were on the stage with him and his son said, what he admired so much about his dad that it didn't matter if he was in a business meeting, if he was out on a construction site, scoping out some land to buy, it didn't matter because his son knew that if it was an emergency, if he needed something from his dad, he could interrupt him. He could literally stop his dad in the middle of a meeting and tell and talk to him and say whatever it is that he needed to share with his dad at that time. That is so huge. If I'm sitting in my room and I'm on my phone and one of my children or my husband comes into my room, I put my phone down and I give them my full attention. I want them to know that I'm actively listening to them and that I really, really care about what it is that they have to say. If you're talking to somebody and they, they're on their phone and they're listening to you and they're scrolling and kind of talking to you and like, uh-huh, 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 you're not going to feel listened to. You're not going to feel valued. You're not going to feel like, you're going to feel like this person really wants you to hurry up and shut up so you can get back to your phone or get back to whatever it is that you're doing. So you want to listen, listen, listen attentively when they talk to you. I'm going to end that right there on number 13. And I will see you guys in part three in the 25 ways to raise uncommon teens in today's world. If you guys have not seen video number one, I urge you to go and watch that one as well. Let me know in the comment box below how this is helping you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put it down below. If you are not subscribed and you just fell upon this video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, and share this video with another parent that you believe can benefit from these videos. I absolutely love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.